When I first met Nancy years ago, I was the complete opposite of a true woman. My heart so resonated with what Mary was talking about today. I have lived out every one of those personal consequences that she just brought to us from Isaiah chapter 3. For years, the words that went around in my head were, you did it, you hid it, you will never be rid of it. You see, as a 17-year-old, I was in church every time the doors were open with my family. I was a leader in my youth group, and I was pregnant. It says in Proverbs 28, 13, whoever covers his sin shall not prosper, but whoever confesses and forsakes his sin will find mercy. And while I knew that verse in my head, I did not believe it. And when I look back now, it was like God was giving me a chance to come clean and to get open and honest about who I was and to walk in his light. But instead, I chose the way of darkness and I chose to cover. I ended the life of my unborn child through abortion. And that was the beginning of a very long downhill spiral for me. I continued to put on my Christian front of being the good Christian girl, but I also continued my life of immorality. I just kept thinking that somehow I could satisfy this emptiness on the inside of me and my blatant scent sin was my attempt to fill the hole in my heart that only God could fill. Thank goodness God in his mercy was pursuing me even when I wasn't pursuing him. One morning I was doing the good Christian girl thing and I had my Bible open and I remember God clearly speaking to my heart and he said, Andrea, if you do not get honest about your past and where you've been and what's going on in your life, then we are going no further. And that scared me to death because I knew he was my only way out. So I went and found an older godly woman and I told her about my immorality and about the abortion. And then I met with her and her husband. And in that meeting, they just asked so many questions and quoted so much scripture that when I left that meeting, the conviction of God was so heavy on my heart. I didn't know what to do, so I just went and found a room in a church, and I got alone with God, and I fell on my face before the Lord, and God, in His mercy, came and met with me. And for the first time, I saw my sin the way a holy God had seen it the entire time. And I was undone. I saw the wickedness of my heart. I'd never seen that before. It was the ugliest thing I'd ever seen. And yet, here this faithful God was still pursuing me. And I thought I had a relationship with him. So I just did the only thing I could think of to do. I started with the top of my head and went to my toes and I gave God every part of me. And what took me months to realize was that that was the point of my salvation. In Luke chapter six, verse 46, Jesus is speaking and he says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, but do not do what I say? Well, I had been calling Jesus Lord for years, but I had never obeyed him as Lord. I'd never placed my life under the authority of Christ. And that day in that room was the first time I had ever repented. After that, everything changed for me. I could not get enough of God's word. It would leap off the page at me. Um, I would open the Bible and it was like God was just speaking to me, teaching me, this is how you live. This is the way, walking in it. I was terrified that I was gonna fall back into immorality because that was the pattern of my life, going from relationship to relationship. So God gave me my life first, which is 2 Peter 1, 3, and it says, but God, through his divine power, has given us everything we need for life and for godliness through the true knowledge of him. 
Well, for the first time I had that knowledge of him and I could live a godly life. So while all this great stuff was going on with the Lord, at the same time, I still continued to hear that voice. You did it, you hid it, you will never be rid of it. I began to get very, very sick. And what I found out later was just all the emotional turmoil, all the guilt, all the shame that I was carrying started to show up physically. I was so sick, I couldn't even hold down a part-time job. And I was diagnosed as having chronic fatigue syndrome. I just hated who I was and what I'd done, and yet I couldn't get away from myself. But still, that faithful God was just pursuing me. And one morning, um, I went to church, and the preacher that morning was teaching on bitterness. And he started talking about how when you're bitter, you have no strength, and yet you have no rest. Then he talks about how it shows up in our spirits that we have this critical, fault-finding, negative spirit. And the more this guy talked, the more I realized he was describing my life. So I sat there in the service just asking the Lord, God, who am I bitter towards? If I'm bitter, and it sounds like I am, then you know it, would you please show me who I'm bitter towards? And God again clearly spoke to my heart and he said, Andrea, you are so bitter towards yourself. You have never received the forgiveness that I already gave you when I died on the cross. In my pride that I thought was humility, it was just my pride of thinking that it would take me years of penance to pay off the debt that I owed. But the reality is I can never, ever pay that price. That's why Jesus came. Only Jesus could pay the debt that I owed. His substitute fully paid my debt. And God was waiting on me to humbly accept the forgiveness that he had already given. He's provided a new life and he wanted me to walk in the freedom of that, not bound by my sin and my shame of my past. Yes, I did it. And yes, I hid it. But because Christ took my place on that cross and I'm learning and I'm growing in the scriptures and people ask me so many times, how did you get free? How did you get well? I did slowly start getting well physically and what happened for me was when the big stack of scripture got bigger than my own thoughts and feelings and I chose to believe what the scripture said over what I thought and felt, God began to heal me and set me free. Yes, I did it. Yes, I hid it. But because Christ took my place on that cross, I am finally rid of it.